Hello everyone, this is Madhusudan Raj, your host. Today, 18th May 2013. And I'm in front of you to discuss the major developments in the Indian economy in the past week. Now, uh, there were uh, some important data, some important statistics which came out uh, in last week and uh, which has some major implications. So I want to discuss those things uh, with you today. I will begin first with the gold import data which came out and with that the current account deficit data also which government published. So you know right now there is this route going on in the Indian economy. The growth numbers are slowing down and there is a pressure on the Reserve Bank of India Governor Subarav to reduce the market interest rate. He is not doing that. I mean, so as much as expected, he is reducing, but he is not, you know, reducing, you know, as much as uh, the industry and the government is expecting from them. Uh, why he is not doing that? He is not doing that because, you know, I, as I told you, he is a little bit, you know, concerned about the high inflation rate in India. So on that front, this WPI figures came out, you know, in last week and in April, uh, WPI was 4.80. 9% and people were quite happy knowing that the inflation rate has gone down so now RBI will have a little bit of more room to reduce the interest rate but that uh, particular uh, uh, enthusiasm was a little bit dampened by the gold uh, import data which came out you know there was this uh, huge you know rise in the uh, import of gold and silver both precious metals simply because you know price have gone down in the international market paper gold price has gone down because of the artific artificial manipulation of the gold bullion bank in close with the world's handle banks but whatever the reason when the gold price came down and all the people were you know are waiting on the sidelines they jumped in to buy gold and because of that there was 138 percent jump in uh, gold and silver import in the last quarter in the india huge india gold spree takes sign off of slowing inflation uh, and because of this uh, huge you know jump in the gold import gold and silver import the current account deficit also widened the surge in gold buying sent the april trade deficit to 17.8 billion up more than 72 percent from march so you know that the first major item in india's you know current account uh, uh, data is you know import data is oil and the second number is gold and silver also so because of this huge jump in the demand for physical gold in india which is actually very good that i will discuss later on because of that the current account deficit has you know gone up by 72 percent you know uh, compared to march and because of this many people were thinking that rbi will have you know lesser uh, lesser room now to reduce the interest rate but as I said after that data came out the inflation number came out and which was 4.89 percent so many people are now thinking that maybe the inflation rate is too low right now this is WPI wholesale price index and because of that RBI may have a little bit further room of you know reducing the interest rate and that is a, that is the reason why the market the stock market is right now euphoric you know, stock market is completely on this RBI's, you know, is completely reliant on RBI's cheap credit policy right now. It is on hopium. So, you know, as I said, uh, when this gold import data came out, uh, it tanked by something like 4, 431, you know, 4, 431 points. And when um, after one more day, when this uh, WPI number came out, it came down and again, it jumped up by 491% 4, 4, or or something like that. So it is completely rely on RBI's cheap, you know, money policy. If RBI stops trading money, the stock market will immediately collapse. So it's all basically right now, uh, nominal figures, all the zeros. It's just paper over. There is no real growth out there. But what is important is this huge, you know, surge in the import of gold and silver. And because of that, the government is right now panicking. You know, uh, they are saying that the rise in gold import. Imports is surprising, it was not expected, Commerce Secretary S.R. Rao told reporters. And immediately after that, now because, you know, uh, as I said, uh, the Indian government is pretty much worried about the current account deficit because they are saying that that is the biggest, you know, threat to the Indian economy, this widening, widening current account deficit. 
so somehow they want to rein in this gold import so immediately after the gold data gold import data came out uh, rbi and government uh, announced that they are going to you know restrict the banks from importing the data so the reserve bank of india uh, brought into effect on monday previously announced restriction on banks importing gold a commerce and trade minister official told reuters that the apple surge had re revived discussion in the government of further duty hikes. So they're also going to hike the import duty. So they have already, you know, put restriction on how much, you know, amount of gold, uh, how much tonnage of gold actually banks can import. And, you know, a few days back, I was talking with one dweller and he was also saying that this is going to have an, you know, this is already having an impact on them. And this is likely to, you know, result into higher premiums. Uh, on uh, gold price so there is a total disconnect between physical gold price and the paper gold price in the new york you know comics market so that is very good you know i think that is very good uh, development that both the markets are now diverging physical market is the real market paper market is on phony it is just for it was just you know invented to suppress the price of gold but anyways, what I want to say is, you know, as I said, uh, government has started panicking and they want to restrict the uh, gold purchase and they want to divert the public from buying gold and they want them to move in the direction of more and more paper promises, more and more paper products. So in that line, government announced that they are going to come out with uh, uh, inflation index gold, uh, inflation index bonds. India to kick off sales of inflation linked bonds in June. So these are this is just yet another paper product, you know, as many of my viewers are already knowing by now that uh, whatever RBI and whatever government, you know, whatever financial instruments they are offering right now, they're all paper, paper promises actually, you know, which are very likely to be dishonored in the future or in case if they're going to repay you, they're going to repay you in, you know, depreciated, you know, currency. But in any case, you know, they have announced this major step that India to kick off sales of inflation linked bonds in June. So let's discuss a little bit of economics and then a bit of morality of what kind of bonds these, uh, these are going to be. This is not a new product, actually, in 1997 also, they launched this kind of bond, but that was, that scheme was a failure because you know it was indexed to WPI and uh, had a fixed coupon rate. But anyways, they are saying that this time is different. Uh, but let's see what kind of inflation index bond this is. First of all, let us try to understand what this inflation is and how they are going to, with which you know they are linking this bond and its coupon rate. So what kind of inflation is that and how the government is measuring that inflation. All right, so India plans to link the principle of the Sovan bonds to the wholesale price index with a four month lag, while the coupon rate will remain linked to principal. So this is nothing but uh, bond, uh, inflation index bond, which is linked to wholesale price index. Now, if you understand how the Indian government is, you know, measuring the WPI, then you know that it's grossly, you know, underestimates the real inflation rate. First of all, this measurement of inflation by using price data is itself faulty. Remember, Mainstream economists and government bureaucrats and they see inflation as a rise in general price level. And this definition is wrong. Inflation is not in the rise of general price level, but inflation is the rise in the supply of money and credit. And when these RBI prints money out of thin air, it creates money out of thin air, that is actually inflation. So the WPI data is actually not going to reflect the real inflation, but in any case, they're linking it to that now let's see that there are two inflation numbers even if we go by their definition that price rise general price level rise is inflation so there are two ways of you know measuring two you know indexes of measuring inflation rate one is wpi and the other one is cpi now remember these bonds are linked with wpi they are not linked with cpi and as i told you wpi grossly underestimates the real inflation rate so i'm just going to give you some data Right. Uh, in last, you know, uh, I, I'm going. I have this data from 2008 of, you know, WPI. Uh, not 2000 and of this April. Um, in April 2013, last month, the WPI was 4.89 percent. And what was the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, or what they call the Retail Inflation? Uh, so CPI was 9.39 percent. 
so there is a gap of 4.5 percent between WPI and CPI so if you are going to measure inflation by using WPI and if you are going to link this government bond with the WPI then obviously that government sovereign bond is not going to protect you against inflation or forget about bonds protecting you against inflation but it is not even measuring the inflation in a correct way so as I said the difference in April month itself is 4.5% right so if you're going to put your money into this government bond you are going to lose the real interest rate will be you know minus 4.5 percent not anything linked with the inflation rate which is as i said underestimated so they are not even linking that with uh, the real inflation rate and as i said actual inflation rate you cannot measure by the you know rise in the price level general price level whatever it is actually there is no such thing as general price level because all the different products are having different prices right but in any case we go with their own terminologies and with their own methodologies even then uh, the linking of this bond with WPI is not going to protect you against inflation and in any case what they're going to do in the future you know when they're going to repay the money suppose if you want to sell your bond and uh, take your money back from the government so what the government is going to do to you know give you this higher money Right, higher repayment which they are linking with WPI to repay you your money they are going to print more money so if we go with the correct definition of inflation which is nothing but you know increase in the supply of money and credit then to you know repay you they are going to create inflation so to protect you against inflation they are actually going to create more inflation <laughs> that is absolutely ridiculous right so you know you cannot kill inflation with further inflation right if you want to protect yourself against inflation then the only sure shot you know uh, way right now is to buy physical gold and silver right but government don't want that because you know you ca they cannot control you you know they cannot control those people who are buying gold and silver because gold and silver gives you liberties gives you freedom nobody can snoop over you nobody can control you no government can do that that's the real reason why they are going after gold and silver but as I said Let's see what is the real inflation rate if we measure it by the increase in the supply of money and credit. So I have this data from 2008 to 2013, so which reflects the inflation rate, you know, uh, M1 growth rate. M1 is money supply a component, M1 means currency with the public plus the demand deposits of banks and other deposits with the RBI. Uh, so in 2008 the um, m1 growth rate was nine nine percent in 2009 uh, it was 2008 it was nine percent 2009 it was 18 percent 2010 it was 10 percent 2009 it was 18 percent 2010 it was 10 percent 2011 it was it was six percent 2012 it came down to minus two percent you know remember at this time they are increasing the interest rate so the money supply M1, M1 growth rate is going down but again you know uh, because the uh, growth figure started to tank this they, they started increasing they started reducing the interest rate again and they started pumping more money into the economy so in 2013 the latest figure in April uh, the M1 growth rate is again 13 percent so if we go by this figure this is actually the inflation rate 9 percent 18 percent 10 percent 6 percent minus 2 percent and 13 percent and if you see average of all this period then it is nine percent remember WPI is only four point eighty nine percent so you are going to lose something like five percent the real interest rate on all this you know government sovereign bond instrument will be negative is negative five percent right now the difference is going to be there so it is not going to protect you against inflation you know government is just trying to fool the public this is just another phony paper promise product please don't buy these government bonds that is economics and there is also a moral aspect when you buy government bonds actually what you're doing is you're giving your heart and money to this crook politicians and what they're going to do with this money they're going to just uh, maybe they're just going to gobble it up into some kind of another corruption scandal or as I said because government is just a pure consumption factor that they are going to just you know uh, spend it on some phony so-called public, you know, pro, you know, public work program, some maybe some infrastructure project, you know, where the infrastructure is actually not required. So, and that will further because that money will be, you know, you know, spent in the economy. So that will further, you know, 
raise the prices of other you know goods and services you know whoever is going to receive that money they're going to spend it into the market and that will further increase the uh, prices so uh, if you buy government bonds and you, you are actually feeding the monster you know government is a gang of criminals and if you're going to give them your money actually you are going to finance this you know this criminal gang I know most people are not aware about this you know fact this nature of real nature of government but in any case there is a moral issue also involved here apart from economics right so you know on the basis of morality itself you should not be feeding the monster you should be you should be starving the beast you know the monster government who is killing us we should not be feeding it we should be starving it so please my advice is remember I'm not a financial advisor so this is nothing official advice I'm an economist, so I'm just suggesting that you stay away from these government bonds and other funny paper promises. Stick with real assets right now. That is what is going to protect you from inflation and all kind of government shenanigans. All right, that was the major issue. The next one I want to talk about today is that government is also going to come out with uh, plastic currency notes. <laughs> so RBI to launch plastic currency notes with longer shelf life. Uh, I have discussed this, you know, issue uh, at length, you know, in my blog. So you can just check out my blog entry, the recent blog entry. I will just say one thing here is that they are saying that this plastic currency notes are going to have a longer shelf life. They are saying that every year something like 10 lakh crore rupees worth of paper notes are being soiled and they have to replace it and this plastic currency notes. Uh, these are plastic notes. They are going to come out. They are going to print something like 10 billion, uh, uh, 1 billion uh, uh, pieces of uh, 10 rupee notes. Uh, they are going to be pl polymer plastic. And the trial is going to be in Kochi, Mysore, Jaipur, Bhuvaneshwar, and Simla. But if the goal of RBI is to you know uh, increase the shelf life of um, currency notes or you know money then why not use just gold and silver coins why not introduce the pure gold standard right you know this there's nothing wrong per se you know in you know launching this plastic currency notes but you cannot call it money it's just currency because it is not backed by anything any any real commodity uh, money like gold or silver so to call this plastic currency notes money will be wrong it is not money it is just another uh, paper promise plastic promise I, I should say now but in any case the real reason why why they they are opting for this thing they're saying that other bankers or other central bankers are also printing it so that's why we want to experiment with it but the real issue I think is that this money can be printed in a much faster way compared to the paper notes and that's what the central bankers like love most because they exist to print money to create inflation and if this plastic currency is easy to print, then obviously they are going to try it. Right? They are obviously going to use it. Right, and the last one uh, is, uh, I think one or two weeks back, uh, RBI Governor Subbarao said that there is no household bubble building up in India. Uh, so again, RBI, Subarao, uh, RBI Governor Subbarao has no idea what is happening in the economy. There is a definite bubble in the real asset sector of India. Even uh, foreign you know, journalists are now taking notice of that. There are uh, articles circulating on internet that there is a definite bubble in Indian housing market, but RBI governor, governor is denying that. That is what is his job. He is he's just behaving like you know, how Ben Bernanke, the U.S. Federal Reserve uh, Bank chairman was, governor chairman was you know, behaving in, in, in 2006. You know? Uh, in 2006, the bubble was about to burst and Bernanke was saying that there is no subprime bubble, there is no real asset bubble in the American economy. You can, you know, uh, uh, search his videos on, you know, YouTube, uh, just search with uh, Ben Bernanke was wrong and you will find all the statements which he was giving that the uh, housing prices are not going to go down, you know, economy-wide, it's maybe some correction. But he was obviously wrong. So Subarav is like Indian Ben Bernanke. And he is obviously wrong when he is saying there is no housing bubble. Housing bubble is definitely there, and it is you know blowing bigger and bigger. Why? Because the uh, interest rates are almost zero right now. You know I have this data of home loan rates in India. Most of the banks, 
uh, 10%, 9%, 10%, 10%. So the so the average is something like t in between 10 to 11%. That is the home loan rate. And if we go by the uh, CPI, their own figure, uh, consumer price index figure, and that is around 10%. So actually, the real interest rate on all these home loans is 0%. So we have to see what happens when this real interest rate moves into the positive territory. Let's say that the interest rate jumps from 10% to 15%. Obviously, at that time, all this real estate you know, market will crash, the prices will crash. The interest rates are so low right now artificially. That's why this bubble is building up. The same thing is also true in the auto sector. In auto sector, also the rates are in between the auto loan you know, rates are between 10 and 15%. So same thing, almost you know, 0% real interest rate. So what we have to watch in future is when this a real interest rate starts to move into the positive you know, territory and it starts to really go up. That will happen when the inflation will kick in again because government is printing a lot of money now, as I said, in 2013, 13%. So after some months time period, the effect will be there in the economy in terms of higher prices, right? So then again, they will put a break on interest rate and again, there will be a a crash but as I said ultimately all this thing is going to result into uh, monetary crack a boom the whole it is very likely that the whole monetary system may collapse right because once the inflationary situation is out of RBI central bank and government's hand it will be very difficult to control it once it is passing beyond 10 15 percent 20 percent 50 percent then it's out of hand and then it's hyperinflation so I think this is all going to end into a kind of disaster. Government is trying to, you know, fool everyone and divert them into paper you know, products. But uh, my suggestion is that you should stick with real assets, continue to accumulate physical gold and silver because that is what is going to protect you from government's inflation. All these bonds, etc., are not even tracking the real inflation. It's just another product to fool everybody. All right, so. I will come back with some more analysis in future. Thank you very much for watching. Good night.